we will be seeing a lot of slichot prayers pretty soon. In fact, some communities have already started doing this during the month of Elul. Slichot are a central part of the liturgy for Yom Kippur. And of course, the soul liturgy that we do on that late night vigil on the weekend prayer to Rosh Hashanah. At CBI, we've had a tradition for a number of years now of doing our slichot service by candlelight. And we plan to do it again this year. It's going to be on August 28th. And it's really one of my favorite nights of the year. The core of our slichot prayers is the 13 attributes of mercy, which begin Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vachanun. These 13 attributes of mercy are God's own description of God's self, found in Exodus 34. In an epic encounter between God and Moses, after Moses pleads for forgiveness for the people because of the sin of the golden calf. There's much written about the 13 attributes, but I only want to focus on the first two words. When we recite Adonai, Adonai, we summon God to recall a breit that God made with us long ago, a covenant that obligates God to respond. There's a tradition in the Talmud that's worth noting about this moment in the Torah, when God reveals the shalosh esrei midot, the 13 attributes. Here in this moment, says Rav Yochanan, God wraps God's self in a talit, a prayer shawl, and reveals to Moses, so the tradition goes, the entirety of our tefillah. So this is to say that the 13 attributes of mercy are not only the core of the slichot liturgy, but perhaps the nucleus of all our liturgy. Two times we say the name of God. Adonai, Adonai. But that's not just because the song goes that way. Those are the actual words of the Torah. Adonai, Adonai. Ibn Ezra says that God is telling us that this is how to address God in times of need. Adonai, Adonai. Similarly, God summons Abraham this way in Genesis 22. Avraham, Avraham. And in Genesis 46, God summons Jacob. Yaakov, Yaakov. And so when we are in need, we should reach out to God. Adonai, Adonai. Nachmanides distinguishes these first two words as God's revelation of who God is, as opposed to later attributes, which are verbs, talking about what God does. Rashi points out that the name Adonai, the tetragrammaton, yud hey vav hey, is the name native to God's merciful nature. And it is repeated here the first time to establish God's mercy prior to our sin. And the second time to remind us that God is still merciful even after we've sinned. Adonai, God who was, God who is, God who will be, invites us to enter a continuum of mercy. This reminds me of something that we know about math, that between any two rational numbers, there exists an infinity of numbers. For me, this is a critical insight about God's relationship with us. To speak of the continuity of God's mercy before and after and during the darkest moments of our lives is to acknowledge that God was there. God knows our story. God sees us. God is watching us, not in judgment, but in mercy. I think it is so important that we as Jews claim this the God of mercy, the continuum of God's infinite mercy. There are other religious traditions that like to characterize the God of the Hebrew Bible as a God of anger and judgment, claiming that grace and mercy came about later. But that's just not true. Adonai, Adonai, God's mercy has not changed. It was there the whole time. And this is our tradition. So when we recite slichot prayers, when we say Adonai, Adonai, or for that matter, when we pray at all, we enter the continuum of God's infinite mercy. And we find that our lives are being witnessed and that we are loved. Adonai, Adonai, El Let's